ladies and gentlemen. Before we start our prayer, I want to talk about why early morning prayers are so important. It's crucial to understand why we pray at the start of our day. Once we see the value of morning prayer, we can truly make it a habit. Not all prayer is effective, but private prayer has its own special rewards. Each of us needs a private space to be with God. Without a quiet place, it's hard to keep up with private prayer. In Mark 1.35, it says that very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went to a quiet place to pray. Jesus understood the value of private time and prayer. Jesus spent 40 days alone in the wilderness and later more time praying alone in the Garden of Gethsemane before his crucifixion. This shows us as his followers the importance of private prayer. We can't do God's work, walk by faith, or live a life that pleases him if we aren't close to him. As believers, we need alone time with God to recharge. It's a time to talk with him, to know him personally, not just through sermons or teachings. This is our chance to read the Bible and see what God has in store for us. Take a moment to reflect. Are you praying as you should? Are you recharging your faith? Do you have a place to pray without distractions? Make time for private prayer because this life can wear you down. Life happens, events, and situations will try to distract you from God. If we try to handle life on our own, it won't work. We need God's strength in the Holy Spirit so we don't burn out. Spending time with God keeps us focused on Him and less on ourselves. The best time for private prayer is in the morning. Amen. That's when our minds are fresh, our bodies are rested, and we're free from the day's worries. It's better to start the day with prayer rather than trying to fit it in later. In Mark 1.35, we read that Jesus made the effort to get up early to pray. If it was important for him, how much more is it for us? Early morning prayers help us keep our thoughts on God before the world fills our minds with worries or temptations. By putting God first in the morning, we show that he is our top priority. It says, Lord, out of all the things I could do first, you're the most important. And when we start our day with God, the rest of the day tends to fall into place. If we wait too long to pray, it often gets pushed aside. We say, I'll pray later, but then it gets delayed or rushed, or sometimes it just doesn't happen at all. If we aren't careful, days can go by without quality time in God's presence, without talking to him or reading his word. And when we're filled up with the world instead of God, there's less room for him in our lives. Colossians 3, 1, 4 says, Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Jesus wants us to seek his kingdom first. And that starts with how we set our minds each morning. When we start our day with prayer, worship, and praise, we become more fruitful for the Lord. Jesus rose before dawn to avoid distractions from people and daily responsibilities. We too should make time for God that we won't miss or delay. Don't let the worries and duties of life take over. Prioritize your spirit because at any moment any one of us could stand before our maker and in that moment those other duties won't matter. When you stand in front of the Lord, all that matters is your relationship with him. When we devote ourselves to the Lord and his word every morning, he restores our soul. He makes us walk in the path of righteousness when we choose to let go of our prayer lines or our prayer time in the morning. Several things can happen. We're not able to see things and people around us from a more spiritual standpoint. We end up reacting to people and situations from a carnal standpoint instead of a let go and let God handle this point of view. We end up facing the day without being fed in our spirit. There are countless things that can go wrong in your day if you choose not to begin your day with prayer. Of course, things can still go wrong when you do pray in the morning. But after you start your day with prayer, you find that you're able to take things on with a peace that's beyond human understanding. You're able to handle things with confidence, knowing that you have a God who works through you, in you and for you. God already knows what we will face that day before we ever open our eyes. Why not take a few minutes to ask him what the plan is? Psalm 119, verse 147 says, I rise before dawn and cry for help. I have put my hope in your word. Hope in God's word encourages us to continue in prayer. It's better to take time from sleep than not to find time for prayer.
We have access to God at all hours. And if our first thoughts in the morning are of God, then he will help to keep us in the right frequency all day long. So hear me, our earliest thoughts should be those of devotion. Our earliest acts should be an acknowledgement of God. Our first action should be private prayer. So let's make a commitment. Commit to starting your days with God. The Bible in Galatians 6 verse 9 says, Let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time. We will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Don't get tired of doing good on a daily basis. That is people of God. We need to develop strong routines that are firmly centered around Jesus Christ. And one of the main habits that we need to develop is daily communion with the Holy Spirit. The Amplified Translation for Ephesians 5 verse 18 says, Do not get drunk with wine, for that is wickedness, corruption, stupidity, but be filled with the Holy Spirit and constantly guided by Him. When we're filled with the Holy Spirit, then that means we're always led by the Spirit. It means we're constantly being guided by the Spirit. It's a state of dependency. You're no longer dependent on yourself or on your resources or your circle of influence, but you're dependent on the Holy Ghost day in and day out. That's why it's so important to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You find that when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're more sensitive to the voice of God. Your heart becomes more responsive to the things of God, to the instructions of God. With the Holy Spirit, you can read, enjoy, and understand the Word of God in a way that's different than if you tried it on your own. So strive to make it a habit that each day you spend time with the Holy Spirit, spend that time developing and building a relationship with the Lord through the help, the guidance, and the leadership of the Holy Ghost. Now let's go to God in prayer. Dear Father God, I thank you. I honor you and I praise you. Lord, I thank you for being more than enough and all that I need. God, I thank you for giving me life, giving me health, and giving me another chance. And Lord, as I come before you today, I ask that you would help me to be a believer who fully depends on you. Lord, I pray that I would be someone who's completely devoted to you. May the Holy Spirit influence me on a daily basis. Ephesians 5 verses 1 and 2 say, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given the same him sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. Lord Jesus, my desire is to imitate you. When you walked on this earth, the Bible tells us that you often withdrew from the disciples. You often withdrew from other people so that you could pray to God, the Father and Lord, I pray that you would give me that same grace to model my life around the example that you said, Help me to withdraw from the world and from all the busyness of life so that I can spend time alone with you in prayer. Lord, let that be my habit. When you walked on this earth, Lord, you showed people from all types of backgrounds compassion and love and mercy. You would eat with sinners. You would love on those who were shunned by society. Help me to love others, Lord. Those who don't look like me, who don't, don't have the same background as me. Help me to love my neighbor with a godly love. Help me to love others regardless of their sin. Lord, help me not to judge others because of their sin. For I too am a sinner saved by grace. One who is in need of your mercy and your compassion, King Jesus, when you walk this earth, Lord, you are about your Father's business. You put your will aside so that the will of God the Father would be done. Lord, I pray for that kind of heart, a heart that puts your will before mine, a heart that puts you first. Let it be my delight to obey your word and fulfill the purpose and the plans that you have over my life. The Bible says in Ephesians 5, verses 15 through 17, Therefore see that you walk carefully, living life with honor, purpose, and courage, shunning those who tolerate and enable evil, not as the unwise, but as wise, sensible, intelligent, discerning people, making the very most of your time on earth, recognizing and taking advantage of others. Each opportunity and using it with wisdom and diligence because the days are filled with evil. Therefore, do not be foolish and thoughtless, but understand and firmly grasp what the will of the Lord is. Father, please help me to walk uprightly. Help us as your children to walk with wisdom and honor before you raise us up to be a faithful people, a people who are not foolish and thoughtless, but raise us up to be a people you who understand and firmly grasp what the will of the Lord is. Raise us up to be a people who are obedient to your will, Lord Jesus. 
Lord, I ask that you would renew my strength daily. I know your grace is sufficient for me each and every day. You extend the grace so that I may walk in obedience to your commands. Lord, I pray that my daily habits would be beneficial to my soul and to my spirit. Let me not sow into the flesh because the flesh is corrupt and I don't want to reap a corrupt harvest. But instead, Lord, I pray that you would revive my spirit, quicken my spirit, Lord, so that I may sow into that which gives me eternal life. And Lord, I know that that is you. You King Jesus, give me eternal life. God, I thank you for hearing my prayer. I glorify you for being a loving and a caring God. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray this prayer. Amen. One of the biggest resources as Christians is prayer. Prayer for us as believers is power. It's our lifeline and a powerful tool that allows us to knock on heaven's door and get God's attention. And throughout the Bible, many men and women all tapped into the power of prayer. Their situations might have been different. Their circumstances might have been different. But the one thing they had in common is that they prayed. For an example, the Bible says in 1 Chronicles 4, verse 10, And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain, so God granted him what he requested. The Bible, when speaking of Hannah, says in 1 Samuel 1, verse 10, And she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed unto the Lord, and wept sore. When Hezekiah fell ill, the Bible says in 2 Kings 20, verse 2, 3, Then he turned his face toward the wall, and prayed to the Lord, saying, Remember now, O Lord, I pray how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart and have done what was good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. And because of his prayer, the Lord answered him in verse 5, as the Bible reads, Return and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people. Thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Surely I will heal you. On the third day you shall go up to the house of the Lord. The Bible also tells us in Jonah 2 verse 1, Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. And in the story we're all very familiar with, Paul and Silas were imprisoned. But the Bible says in Acts 16 verse 25, And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. Do you see a pattern here? In all the verses I've read, Hezekiah on his deathbed prayed, Jonah in the belly of a fish prayed, Hannah in deep anguish prayed, Jabez when seeking a blessing prayed, prayed. So you see, prayer is necessary for us. And the Bible gives us all these different examples of men and women who sought after the Lord in prayer so that we can learn and be encouraged. No matter where you are, God can hear you if you pray. Whether you're underwater, God can hear you. If you're at the end of your life, God can still hear you, no matter your situation. I encourage you to pray. Prayer still works. God still hears prayers. The Lord still answers prayers. If you call unto the Lord, his word says, I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Jesus Christ is faithful and merciful when you cry out in faith. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we give you praise and honor. We glorify your name. And we are thankful for your goodness. Give us grace in our prayer lives and strengthen us to pray with fervency, to pray with boldness and faith. Strengthen our prayer lives, Master. The Bible tells me that Jesus, while on this earth, prayed. He prayed in the morning. He prayed often. He would separate himself from those around him just to pray. I pray for the same discipline, Father. We pray for the same heart of prayer. Give us a strong desire to pray. May it become a habit. May it become a routine and a lifestyle. In Jesus' name, I pray. Let us become believers who, when faced with anything, our first instinct is to turn to the Lord in prayer. If we are struggling with anything, may the Holy Spirit remind us to pray before I seek a solution elsewhere. In the Bible, Daniel prayed, and he kept praying until you gave him an answer. Father, give us this same relentless spirit to pray and to keep seeking you until the breakthrough comes. Help us to keep persevering and fighting on our knees, never giving up until we hear from you.
Father, we understand that a prayerless Christian is powerless. A prayerless Christian is disconnected to their only source of power, which is you, Lord. So I ask that the Holy Spirit would be our strength and help us to pray and to pray often. Help us to be diligent and alert so that we would not be distracted by anything or anyone when it's time to pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the victory that is in your name. And Lord, as we agree in prayer, help us never to leave the door open to the kingdom of darkness because of a lack of prayer. Help us never to leave our guard down when it comes to prayer. Release an unquenchable desire within our hearts to pray. Make us prayer warriors in your kingdom, Lord Jesus. Make us prayer warriors who are dedicated and committed to maintaining a close relationship with you. Give us the strength and discipline to get on our knees every day. Acts 2 verse 17 says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Pour out your spirit in our lives, Lord Jesus. I pray that you would revive our prayer lives. May you birth a new passion within us, a passion that is prayer. We desire to experience your presence. Don't pass by without pouring out your spirit over our lives and our homes. May we become believers who are sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. When he leads us to pray, help us to make sure that we are never so busy with worldly things so that we would miss a divine appointment with you. But I pray that our hearts would always put you first, Lord. I pray that our passion would only be for the things of God. Be glorified and magnified, be lifted. Hi, King Jesus, I bless your name, and I thank you for hearing this prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray, amen. Jesus gave the parable of the two sons in Matthew chapter 21, verses 28 through 32. The Bible reads, what do you think a man had? Two sons. And he went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But afterward, he changed his mind and went. And he went to the other son and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said the first. Jesus said to them, truly, I say to you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even when you saw it, you did not afterward change your minds and believe him. Here are some of the lessons that we can take away from this parable. Firstly, what you say is not always what you do. There are people who will say they love God, but their actions will say otherwise. There are people who will declare and proclaim their love for Jesus Christ, but they will live a life that does not match up to their declaration or their proclamation. Jesus himself said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. This verse is telling us that there will be people who can say all the right things. They can sound like a Christian. Oh, they can talk like a born-again believer, but it's not the one who can talk the talk that will enter the kingdom of heaven. The Bible says the one who does the will of my Father, that's who will enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, from the parable of the two sons, when the father requested that the sons work in the vineyard, the first son said, I will not, but afterward he changed his mind and went. The second son said, I go, sir, but he did not go. The first son, in a sense, the first was convicted and came to repentance. With the second, there was no intention to go. There was no change of heart. There was no realization of what he was doing. And so, saints, I want to encourage you, if you're in sin, Allow the Lord to change your mind. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit and change your ways. Don't let your heart be hardened. If you truly love Jesus Christ, that love has to be evidenced through the manner in which you live your life. If you really are a believer and a disciple, then it's not what you say that matters. It's what you do. Do not simply be a hearer of the word, but be a doer also. Now pray with me. Father, we praise your name because you're a patient and loving God. Your word says in Matthew 13, verse 19, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. 
Lord, I'm praying that you would not let this be me. Amen. I rebuke the enemy in Jesus' name. May the Holy Spirit protect the word that has been sown in my heart. May he guard it. So that the devil cannot come and snatch it away. Matthew 13, verses 20 through 21. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. Father, as I read and receive your word, may it be deeply rooted within me so that when difficulty comes, it will be your word that encourages and strengthens me. God, help me not to fall away when tribulation comes, but instead may I be steady and anchored in you, King Jesus. Your word says in Matthew 13, verse 22, As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. King Jesus, help me, protect me, give me the grace to be strong so that the word that's in my heart would not be choked out by the cares of this world. Help me, Lord, so that I would not be drawn to the superficial pleasures of this world. Lord, I pray that I may be the type of believer who hears the word and understands it. Help me to be a believer who bears fruit because your word has been sown on good soil. God, I pray that you would make us people of integrity. May we be men and women who not only say the name of Jesus Christ, but may we be found to be following Jesus Christ, practicing your commandments and your teachings. Your word in James 1 verses 22 through 25 says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. Lord, I pray that I would be a believer who does more than just declare my faith. Holy Spirit, help me to be one who puts it into practice. Help me, Lord Jesus, to live according to your word. I want to live a life that is governed by your word, a life that's ruled by your word. Romans 2 verse 13 says, For it is not the hearers of the law who are righteous before God, but the doers of the law who will be justified. Lord, I understand that you do not want those who merely hear the word, but freely choose to disobey the word. I pray that I may be one who, who is moved by your word. May I be moved to repent as I read your word. May I be moved to seek first the kingdom of God. Father, help me to stay in tune with your word. Lord, help me to have rich soil for your word to be planted that I may produce good fruit. Father, I thank you right now. I bless you. I honor you. I give you all glory and praise. I appreciate you listening to this prayer in Jesus' name. I pray and I thank you. Amen. What do you think? A man had two sons, and he went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But afterward, he changed his mind and went, and he went to the other son and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, The first. Jesus said to them, Truly, I say to you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even when you saw it, you did not afterward change your minds and believe him. 